Blech. We know that Glenn Danzig is a lot of things, guys. He is a lot of things. He's a musician. He's a singer. He's a songwriter. He plays guitar, bass, drums. He plays the piano. He's a composer. He is a writer. He is a director. He is an actor. He was a record label owner and runner. He's a graphic artist. He's a photographer. And he does illustration. He runs a comic book company. He's an art dealer. For better or for worse, he does it all. It's really kind of weird to think that Glenn Danzig was also a movie critic. That's right. Glenn Danzig, for a period of time in the early 80s, wrote these tiny little movie blurb reviews for Flipside Magazine. Ugh. If you don't know what this one is, what the fuck you doing here? This is going to make you all angry, possibly. I don't know what your favorite Halloween film is, but my favorite Halloween film is Halloween 3. You know why? I don't give a damn about Michael Myers. I think it's a one-note subject. They did it one time. Frankly, I hate to say it, I think Rob Zombie did it better than John Carpenter even. I just... I love the story he did. Rob Zombie is probably the best thing Rob Zombie's done, you know, featuring Halloween by the Misfits. Um, I love Halloween 3, man. It's just so, and you would think that for a guy who's obsessed with Sam Hain and, you know, uh, the fact that, you know, all the stuff involving Sam Hain that Glenn would really be down with Halloween 3. And that's not the case. This is what he says. He says, Halloween 3 doesn't even deserve a full review. This one sucks. And the night he came home, he should have visited Deborah Hill and John Carpenter. So basically he wants Michael Myers to slash up Deborah Hill and John Carpenter for making or for producing Halloween 3 season of the witch, baby. It's phenomenal. And, you know, originally what some of you may or may not know, Halloween 3 was supposed to usher in one new anthology Halloween film per year. Meaning that they did Michael Myers twice. They're like, okay, we've done the boogeyman, dude. Now we're going to do this story about, like, you know, sacrifice and, you know, uh, saying sacrifice using Halloween masks on children for Halloween. And basically every year they were going to have a, it's like American Horror Story, but just the Halloween series. And when it flopped because it didn't have any Michael Myers, then what do we get? We get part four, the return of Michael Myers, which was just absolute garbage. Now, what's interesting is, I think we live in an alternate reality. In the real world, the re in this non-alternate reality, like the actual world, they did that. They did, because it makes sense. We're going to do a new film every year, because how many times could we do Michael Myers? And I think that we live in the alternate reality, kind of like, have you ever seen Back to the Future Part 2, where Marty is in Hill Valley and he goes to the movie theater and he sees Jaws 19 on the screen. And it's kind of just like a parody of like sequelitis and like, oh my God, how many times could you do Jaws 19 times? Well, we live in the future where they did like 12 Michael Myers movies. They're, they did so many Michael Myers movies. It's just such a tired thing. Give me the variety. I love anthology stuff. I love Twilight Zone. I love Tales from the Crypt. Get, could you imagine if they had never stopped and we got 30 different Halloween-esque Halloween movies every fall? Like, you know, the way that, like, Saw, there were, like, all those Saw movies consecutively every year from 2004 to, like, 2010, I think it was. There was a new Saw movie in, around Halloween. The same thing with, really, with the the, the Jason movies and the Fre Freddy movies. They both, you know, they 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 just had so many sequels. They did sequels for, like, eight or nine years, or whatever, however it long it was. Uh, before they petered, petered out and then obviously revamped. 